The mysterious kingdom is almost complete. But what is a kingdom without a castle? Join us now as we show you our weenies. This is Opposite Attractions. Attractions, ladies and gentlemen, the show about theme park design that is technically possible. I am your host for this evening, Scotty Moore, and joining me as always is the thousandth happy haunt, the man who rolled a critical fail on a co-host, it's Jim Murphy! I forgot my dice, I'm sorry. No, that's okay, we, we, you, you'll be fine, we're Can good. I flip a coin? Uh, I mean, you can if you want to. I have a dime somewhere. It's always going to come up failure. So, you have told me that you're apparently very riled up about Galaxy's Edge, and I don't know why. Okay, so, when they announced Galaxy's Edge, they made a point of saying that um, merchandise in Galaxy's Edge would be... Special. Okay. Um, I don't know how... Uh, that it would not just be like normal theme park merchandise. From what you've described to me in the past, it's almost like it would be from that world. As if, like, us going to a store and seeing a box of Rice Krispies, we would go there and see their Rice Krispies. Yes. That is essentially what they promised us. Yeah. What they have uh, shown pictures of today, at, or what, what people have shown pictures of uh, at Star Wars Celebration, which is going on, is not that. Oh no, what is it? I haven't seen anything I'm, I'm yet. I'm not saying that they, that they definitely don't have those things. Like, they could still have them, but when they go like, hey, here's some of our resistance slash... First order merch, and it's keychains and uh, pins and uh, clothing that feels really weird. Yeah, the only thing I've seen from it so far is of the um, of the ride vehicle for Rise of the Resistance. I think, and I really like how where it's supposed to be like, make sure the children are seated, make sure this, like where all that text is, it's in like Star Wars language, yes. and I very much I, I don't know that. how to pronounce the name of what that language is, but yeah, they the there was one thing on the Resistance side that made me sad. And that was a box that literally was like, well, there was multiple boxes, but it was literally like collectible figurines. Oh, uh, like a like a blind box kind of thing? No, like, have you seen, like, if you go to a Disney store where they sell, like, a little, like, bubble package box with, like, all the Mickey Mouse Club people in it? Oh, or, yeah. Like... Or like the Cars characters, or I, I know um, what you're talking about. That they, it's literally that, and it's like a Chewbacca and a Ray, and like a, a, I think like Greedo was in there. I honestly thought you were gonna be like I was very upset because they're selling a pin of Han Solo getting stabbed through the chest. <laughs> I thought that was very inappropriate. There was that which made me sad, and then there was like like you could buy a die cast Millennium Falcon. And other such things. I'm still gonna buy it. I don't care. I want my I want my own Millennium Falcon. It's that's fine. That should be the stuff they sell at Star Tours. Yeah, exactly. Not the stuff they sell in the world, but supposed to be like the hidden resistance, like stronghold yeah. on a plan on a far distant planet. Um, also, speaking of uh, dark merchandise, someone posted a picture earlier today of like when the Lion King out, Lion King came out. Disney like did a sponsorship with McDonald's to sell puzzles in the kids' meals. Okay. Apparently, one of the puzzles literally depicted the scene where Mufasa <laughs> dies, and this is what it was meant to go to children in in McDonald's. 
So Galaxy's Edge may not be the worst when it comes to merch ideas. Was there also, did there also happen to be one of like Simba and uh, the lady line like getting ready to do it? Oh yeah, that's in there. Um, They're going to do a whole series. There's one of Bambi's mother mid shot. There's Um, one of like Timon and Pumbaa like vaping. Yeah. Oh, man, don't tell me those two don't vape. It's a guarantee that Timon and Pumbaa vape. They use Heimlich from A Bug's Life as a vape pen. Yes. Um, But speaking of Galaxy's Edge, I mean, it's guaranteed at this point that almost every single single one of those rides is going to have like a hundred minute plus wait time. Oh, it's going to be bad. Well, they're only opening the one first. Yeah. But, Jim, that's why I would like to... Formally announce the brand new Scotty Moore formula for wait times. This okay. is a formula to figure out how long you're willing to wait in line. I worked all day on this instead of doing my actual job. So there are four uh, four different, um, I-, I guess, variables. One is the T variable, which is based on the number of times you've ridden it. Uh, LT, which is the length of the ride itself. QR, which is a quality rating of the ride from 1 to 10. You can either base it on your own personal experience or, if you've never ridden it before, online reviews. And then finally, the GU, which I've entitled the Give Up Quotient, which is how long of a wait time you're willing to wait. Like, best possible scenario, a ride you've always wanted to ride, how long are you willing to wait? And the way you calculate it is you take 120 minutes and divide it by how long you're willing to wait, which for me is 60 minutes, so my give-up quotient would be 2. If yours is 90, it'd be like 1.5. That's how you calculate it. And the exact formula is you take the quality rating of the ride, ride from 1 to 10, okay. multiply that by 10, and then you add the length of the ride. And in a perfect world, Jim, that would be the exact amount of time that you would be willing to wait for any ride. But here's the thing. You may have ridden it before. You may have had this experience before. You may want to let someone else have that experience. So you take that number and divide it by the number of times you've ridden it multiplied by your give up quotient. And that will give you the longest amount of time you're willing to wait for a ride. By length, do you mean in minutes? In minutes. It's going to be in minutes. So Okay, let uh, me figure this out here. Let for, me do a little quick math. So, for instance, with me, um, for what the hell I did this? Okay, there we go. For Flight of Passage, which is a perfect ride in my opinion, uh, I give it a 10 out of 10. So multiply that by 10, you get 100. Add the six minutes that the ride is, you get 106 minutes. I'm not counting Q line, although I think I should. This is still an early alpha. And then I divide that by the number of times I've ridden it, which is only one, and multiplied by my quotient, which is two. That gives me a two. Divide it all out. That says I'm willing to wait 53 minutes to ride Flight of Passage. Are you doing your own over there? I'm watching you just yeah. writing shit down. Yeah, I'm trying to figure this out. Um, Let's see. Uh, well, I- I'm going to take my fate. This is literally my favorite ride. And what screwed me on this is the fact that my... So you start with 120 for the give up. That's what you're saying? You start with the give up quotient is 120 divided by how long you'd be willing to wait for the perfect ride. So I'd be willing to wait an hour. Oh, so when for you the di- perfect ride. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so let me see here. Figment for me, I give it like a 6 out of 10. I do love it, but I mean, when you compare it to all the rides, I give it a 6 out of 10. So that gives me 60. Add the 6 minutes it takes. That's 66. Divide it by the number of times I've ridden it, which I decided to give a cap at 5. Otherwise, things would get really bad. So that gives me uh, 5 times my give up quotient. gives me 10. Divide that all out. I'd be willing to wait 8 minutes for a figment. Okay, because I actually didn't put a cap on mine. <laughs> oh, and so. No. So for uh, for Spaceship Earth, uh, according to this, um, I would only be able to will be willing to wait about 
80 seconds. I mean, that's kind of how I am at this point. Um, let's see. Another. Okay, let's go with another one of my favorites. Maybe 85 seconds. Actually, 85 seconds. I'm wrong. Okay. Another one of my favorites, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. Give it a straight 100 minutes based off of just how much I love that ride. Add the four minute length of the time. Divide it by the number of times I've ridden it times my quotient, which would be 10 because I've ridden it so many times. I would wait 10 minutes for the ride. (laughs) Which is still, what's weird is this is kind of accurate at this point. I'm like, yeah, I would wait that about that amount of time. And uh, fun fact, if you are going with somebody else, you find both of your uh, your totals and you take the longer one. So say I'm with somebody who's never ridden Harry Potter, you would take her quotient to establish whatever uh, your time would be. Would you like to guess what has the lowest... <laughs> Wait time I am willing to wait for. Um, Race through New York. Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, yes. Very correct, because uh, it's the only thing that I've given a zero out of ten. <laughs> so uh, add the four minutes, divide it by the number of times I've ridden it, which is one. So I would be willing to wait like two minutes for Jimmy Fallon. Uh, Fast and the Furious Supercharged, I was also willing to wait about four minutes for... The thing is, that might actually be a thing you could do. Oh, yeah, yeah. I am. Um, no, straight up. Like, what's weird is I made this and I'm like, eight minutes seems really short. And then I thought about it. I'm like, yeah, I'm that petty bastard. I'm the one who will look down and be like, Haunted Mansion has a 20 minute wait. Fuck that. I need to wait a whole. <laughs> if it's not 15 minutes, I'm not getting on it, baby. <laughs> Well, yeah, but the thing is, do you calculate the ride length into all the times where you get stuck in the attic? No, 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 that's not in there. Uh, Haunted Mansion. Because that would add a good 20 minutes to your time, I think. Haunted Mansion, at this point, I'm willing to wait 10 minutes for. Pirates of the Caribbean is 7 minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, Let's see, do I have any other ones? Yeah, I can't really cap. Like, I'm pretty sure I've done Figment, like, over 30 times. I'm pretty sure I've done... Spaceship Earth over 30 times. That's why I put the cap at five. Because any more, and I was like, that this is going to get out of hand. But Jim Murphy, this is a, not a podcast about great theories about theme parks. It is instead a podcast where we build our own theme park. And this season, we are, of course, building our beautiful D&D theme park known as the Mysterious Kingdom. And last week, Jim, I gave you a challenge, a challenge to get everybody in here, to give us a vicious weenie to put across the skies. And uh, my idea has already gone off the rails because my idea is basically Tom Sawyer Island meets the Winchester house. So... Uh, there was you- there there literally was this very small window of time where I thought, oh no, this idea I have is getting way too close to the mystery house and I need to back it off a slight bit. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was like, no, fuck it, we're gonna go with it because I've added a twist. Uh, this one is not a. It's not a ride, basically. It is a walkthrough where you and a bunch of people can all go walk through it. And I'm going to say there's like 10 steps that need to be accomplished. I was I would say that it's weird to have like the the main thing of your park be like a walkthrough. But Disney's already done that like three times. Yeah, exactly. It's fair game. I've walked through that castle in Disney World multiple times, Uh, mostly just to get fairy dust. That's it. You've seen the. uh, the the Nazi uh, mosaics. Yes, exactly. Um, so mine, uh, we, we, we did want to try to keep this basically around like this is the old castle of the king or his chambers or whatever. So mine is the home of the Mad King. It's a journey into the home of the Mysterious Kingdom's former king and the outside... I really like this idea that it does look like a traditional Disney Cinderella's castle or something like that, but it's kind of got that... That, like, vines are growing on the outside, that I am legend bullshit all over it, making it look (laughs) real dark and abandoned. And it's basically the Winchester house. So you'll go into certain rooms, and you'll see, like, 
wait, why is this all bricked up? Like you open a door and it's bricks. Then you go into another room and there's just like weird bouncy balls everywhere. And then you go to a, you go into one room and it just looks like the desert and that's it. Um, so and here's the Mad King's bedpan. Yes. So you go around and you see all these different things and some people will treat it and leave it just like that, that there's nothing to discover here. But there are small clues and hints hidden around and basically what is an ARG that makes it very difficult to learn the secrets of the Mad King. But if you do and if you solve all ten puzzles, basically, you can finally enter his chamber. I made Mario 64. Jim, I made Mario 64. I realized it halfway through the pitch, but it's this okay. Well, this is very much the Kosai adventure realm yes. situation is what this is. It's just, this- yeah, but except that instead of being like able to like see some like tiki gods, you're like getting into the king's bedroom. Yeah. So that's wonderful. And so what I liked with this is since we have our app that you can use to get everything in, instead of it being a place where you could like wait in line for the king's chambers and just look at what they're doing and put in a code, you have to have everything on your phone to access his chambers. And this is where you find the you find the solution of the king. You find where he died, how he died. And that's when you walk up to his tomb. And that's when you realize, Jim Murphy, his tomb is not a tomb at all. It's a motherfucking time machine. That's right. The king has traveled in time. And, of course, you walk up to it, you touch it in your app, you get the king's crown, which I really enjoy this concept of most of our stuff is all app-based, but if you get the king's crown, if you did all of this work, you can go turn it in and get a real crown to wear. Um, so then at that point, you could leave. You could leave the king's chambers. You could leave that place forever and go to ride other rides. But here's the thing, Jim Murphy. I'm not here to reward the people who aren't just here to look around. I want to reward the people who are investigators. So before they touch that time machine, you need to look around the chambers of the king. You need to find out who the king truly was and you'll notice if you look in the corner you see an easel where he used to paint beautiful pictures and make amazing drawings you see a horrifying symbols painted around the walls of three intersecting circles that look so strange and then if you go to his desk you see the blueprints for his original plans for the mysterious kingdom but if you wipe them off just enough you see that this was never supposed to be the mysterious kingdom this was supposed to be a place of beauty and wonder and that's when you discover the kingdom's original name the magic kingdom (laughs) 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 and then you leave I really thought you were going to go with Marty McFly. Oh, no, no. It is not Marty McFly. This park was definitely once... uh, (laughs) The King was once definitely old WD. Oh, that changes my plans for a layout slightly, but I'll go with that. I did like this idea, and I know that basically this is the latest part in the game to propose this, that it's essentially Magic Kingdom just with different rides put in its place. So, Jim Murphy, that's my proposal for a ride, and also proposing that our park was once heralded by Walt Disney. What's your idea? (laughs) Okay, so I did not go that exact direction. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so, uh... My castle was created by, uh, Winch, uh, let's see, what do I, uh, William Universal. (laughs) He was trying to make a studio. My name's Teddy Universal. We're gonna beat that Disney out of town. So, I had this idea for, um, sort of like, I don't, uh, how I put this. So, the queue for this, it's, it, this is a ride. The queue is like outside of this castle are these like, gar- are these like beautiful gardens. Okay. That's where this starts. It's like this big castle and there are all these gardens that you can, and there's people out front that are like, come explore the gardens. And they don't really tell you that like there's a ride 
on there. But uh, they tell you, like, come check out these gardens. So you walk back through these gardens, and at, uh, some, at certain points you pass through these archways. Yeah. These, like, overgrown sort of archways. But at one point you pass through an archway, and on one side, on, like, the outside that, like, guests can see, it is very, like, green and lush and pretty and all that stuff. But once you pass through this archway, like, everything kind of really takes a turn to, like, decay. Yeah. And I think that's a that using fake plants and stuff. I think that's an effect that could be pulled off. Okay. Now so, we're at a point right now where I'm very terrified that you've either ripped off the ending of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire or the entire film The Shining. So keep going. I just want to know. <laughs> no, it's uh, so you you're kind of like okay, where do we go next? And you're kind of moving through now this like decaying sort of castle landscape and. You get to a point where it looks like the trail in front of you is kind of blocked off. Okay. And there's a sign that's like, oh, you can get to the uh, gardens through, like, this other way. Like, you have to walk through the greenhouse or whatever. So you go over to the greenhouse, and there's, like, some people around that are, like, robed. Okay. And they're like, come this way, come this way. And so they take you in in, like, groups. So you join a cult. That's fine. All right. They take you in in groups of 30, and this is kind of like where the pre-show starts, as you walk into this greenhouse, and you basically find out that you're now, like, trapped by this evil wizard that, like, took over the castle. To- Toby Universal, yes. So, the the wizard, ha- this evil wizard has taken over the castle and has imprisoned the king and queen, if there's a queen, whatever, and... Like, now, because you've, like, somehow managed to, like, break through whatever magical defenses he had outside the castle, like, you, you they, now you're going to have to go down and, like, be put in the dungeon with the king. Oh, okay. So, like, your group gets taken down, and at one point you kind of get into, like, a weird, like, old-timey, like, medieval style like elevator sort of situation because the idea is like these dungeons are like way below ground but it is just like an effect it's kind of like the hydrolators or something where like the walls move but you don't it, move it's like a escape to gringotts escape to gringotts has a very similar way of going down to the where their ride vehicle is so you go down into the dungeon and the king is in there and they th- like the the hooded people like throw you into the dungeon and they like lock the door behind you, and then the and then they leave. And the king's like, "Okay, now that they're gone, like understand." And he tells you this whole story about how like he designed the castle to like basically give himself a way out if he would ever get trapped in his own dungeon. But he realizes that if he escapes, that like the wizard's gonna know, and he's gonna go after the rest of the kingdom. So as long as he just stays in the dungeon, like everybody else is safe. Okay. So he he walks over to the wall and, like, does some weird mystical crap. And, like, basically the wall opens up and you walk into where the ride vehicles are. And they said, he says that that's, like, your way to escape. And in this cave where the ride vehicles are, there actually is, like, people from, like, the kingdom that are like, we're going to help you get out. Like, this is our tunnel system. But the king was kind of nuts, so he's like, look, he's like, this is kind of like the way they built this escape route is kind of crazy. Like the king wanted to like have like be like an adventurer when he if he ever got a chance to escape, he wanted it to be like a like a weird Indiana Jones sort of a thing. They wouldn't use that name, but that's kind of how it's going to be. Yeah, they're more like it's going to be like escaped from Gringotts. Yes. Yeah. So they stick you in these, uh, like, sort of a Snow White's mind train sort of a thing. Like, 16 people to a car. There's two sets of cars there. Okay. And the way this would be built, like, logistically is that from that point you would go through the caves, but the caves would kind of be in the facade of the castle that you were just walking around outside of. And then you like the the actual show building where the ride is would kind of be behind the castle, like hidden, so you, you can't see it. And it would just okay. be like really like a big thunder, uh, you know, seven doors thing where you're not really like you're you're basically in a tunnel, like you're not really off the ground. Like there's no point where you like look down and there's like and you're really high off the ground. Like there might be some points where there would be like special effects that would kind of look like that. 
Yeah. But for the most part, you're like kind of ground level and you're just kind of going fast and whipping around these corners. And then you eventually do come to like a stopping point and these people from the kingdom are like at the exit and they're like, look, um, like nobody outside knows that the king's been trapped. Like you can't tell anybody. And we, we actually have this exit for like people that aren't the king and it actually takes you out back into where the gardens are, but on the other side. And then they point to like basically the maintenance bay and they're like, if the king would ever come through, we'd send him down that way. And that's how he would like be able to get far away from the castle and like away from the wizard. Okay. I'm so it's like a story. It's a, it's a storyline way of like not having you end up like a mile and a half from the park. Yeah. All right. So then you would you would come back out of this cave, and I actually thought there might be some way to do like a weird sort of um, almost like a like the Harry Potter like the station nine and three quarter like wall walk like walk through the wall thing. I don't know if I could actually pull that off, like that special effect. Yeah, have you seen how they do it? Because it's really dope. Yeah, I've I've seen how it works, but I don't know if I could f- pull it off in a way that like. Like, because there's part of me, like, yes, I've seen it, and, like, I know that, like, when you walk around the corner, you just see the tunnel, and you don't really see the effect unless you're far away from it, but I would love to see if there was a way to make it look more like you were actually doing it for real, and I don't think it's possible. I mean, when Universal Studios could not effectively pull it off, like, the, uh, because it's really cool the way you do it. You go in, and basically, you, the only way to see it is leave your family behind your family takes a video and the video shows a mirror of you walking through a wall and that it's really cool that's the only way you could do it and then the other way they do it is when you go into um diagon alley you kind of just walk through some bricks and you hear the bricks moving but there's not really an effect there so i'd I'd really be interested too to see if you could pull it off i think i think my uh the basic idea would be that there would be like a cave pillar yeah and it would look like from it would look like that it was that you could just basically walk all the way around the pillar like it would be pretty wide but the i the actual idea was if you went in on like the right side you would actually kind of turn to the right more and kind of 90 degree your way out but the lighting and stuff would make it look like you just vanished behind the rock yeah i think that could possibly work now i want to propose an idea and it's uh i'm gonna call it we need to have a word for when this happens when we can combine our rides we can come we can voltron this shit well, i like i like your idea of the arg though because we haven't really done something like that and to have that be the like it, it, it for this being like a dungeons and dragons type of thing like that really fits in with that sort of aesthetic here's what i'm thinking i'm thinking you can ride your ride the only difference is chain take out the king the king's not in the dungeon basically this weird cult is kidnapping you for how good you are in the park like you're just an amazing wizard warrior whatever and they want to use your skills to try to take out the king you get on the ride, you go through all of the stuff normally, and then at the end, it's when you finally are about to confront the king, he's gone. He's vanished into his time machine, and fucking D- Dick Universal or whatever his name is like, no, he's left, no, and then you leave and uh, get rescued somehow from that ordeal. So you could have mine going on, Mine is basically the backstory to your ride. My my section is getting more information about what your ride is based on. It's like when you, um, if you are like me and can sweet talk those people at Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, they could be like, well, how about this? You can have an exclusive tour through the castle. And I'm like, yes. So then you could go through the castle and see it. So that would be the same thing. There, there's the idea of like we do the quest thing, and and the idea is like if if it is a roller coaster, you can't just have like one person riding it. Yeah. So it could be that the people basically doing the pre-show or doing the queue would kind of know which people in any group of people are like the ones that did everything. So they could just be they could point them out and just be like, 
and point to everybody else and say, well, you're with them, so obviously we have to take you too. Yeah. Well, I would argue, honestly, the best way to pull this off is instead do it in reverse. Whereas, like, the app takes control of anything. You cannot take the tour of the castle unless you've ridden the ride. And once you get through the ride, you get a quest in your app to discover more about the king. So uh, I'm going to scrap the entire idea about the king being dead. Instead, you're now trying to learn more about the king. So finally you get up to his quarters and you learn that he's Walt Disney. <laughs> I, I had my, my basic idea for the dungeon thing was uh, from Discworld. Okay, okay, I'm down so, like with that. Like the guy, the, uh, the guy, there's uh, the character where they like, they stick him in the dungeon and then they realize that like, that's like the safest place they possibly could have put him because like he knows like he's the only one that really knows like the entire area all, all the traps and stuff so they're like oh crap like he this is exactly where he wanted to be like nobody can get to him now yeah uh but jim murphy it's been an episode and next week we got to kill this baby. We've got to murder the yeah, child. I got to go back through all my pages. We have to murder the mysterious kingdom next week, unfortunately. Um, but here's the thing. We've done what stays and what goes. We've done other ridiculous things. But I have an idea for next week, Jim Murphy. I have a concept of the only way we could truly end this park. And if you want to find out about that, make sure to subscribe to the official Opposite Attractions iTunes channel. Anyways, where can people find you on the internet, Jim? Uh, I'm on Twitter at Apparently Smart, and uh, please go on uh, Amazon and buy my book. It's called Accounting for Glory. And you could find me on Twitter at ScottyMo, S-C-O-T-T-Y-E-M-O. Buy all my books on Amazon, the Quizzle Corp trilogy, which is very appropriate of the D&D park because it's a D&D based uh, entire trilogy of books. So make sure to check that out. The first one's really bad, and I'm sorry about that. And check out all the other shows on a load of pure BS.com. There's a load of BS if you like two jackasses being idiots for an hour. Fight Boys if you like pro wrestling. And then, of course, Fun Fiction. We just had a really awesome Harry Potter inspired episode with Mike Schubert of Potterless, so make sure to check that out. And, of course, remember to support the show, whether that be by donating like the Patreon saint of the show, Ransom Meltzer, or, of course, picking up some merch at merch.alittlepurebs.com. But if you can't do that, we understand. So just make sure to leave a comment on the video if you're watching on YouTube or, of course, uh, leaving a review on iTunes. Whatever you guys can do to support, it would mean the world to us. And then, of course, remember to find Jim and me on Twitter at up at show. That's spelled O-P-P. A-T-T-S-H-O-W. Are you down with O-P-P?